Hello, 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 hello. It's 4.23 in the morning and we are leaving Strand in the rain. Uh, it's trip number 20 for us. We're really excited. Uh, the past year and a half, just over a year and a half, trip number 20. And what makes it even more exciting is that we are heading to New Batesta. It's about a 700, just over a 700 kilometer drive from here. And we're really looking forward to seeing that place. We've tried so many times to get there and just couldn't get around to it. This time we've decided this is it. So we hope you enjoy the trip with us. We're leaving Strand on a Saturday morning in the rain. And we hear that they say there's a monster cold front heading our way. So we're going to see what this trip looks like. Uh, the fact that we're leaving on a Saturday morning is a first for us. We've always left on a Monday morning. But uh, that can tell you what kind of trip we're looking at, eh? New Batesta! <laughs> How exciting is that? I've really looked forward to coming to see this town. I haven't, I've heard so much about it, but yeah. And it's the owl route we'll be taking. The what route? Owl. Owl route, route. okay. Okay, I'll see there. Welcome to the Owl Route. And I wonder if it's tar all the way. I, I don't think it's tar all the way, but just a short bit of gravel. The way I looked on the map. Let us go see. This is super exciting. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> so cool when we drive on a road for the first time. Like the first time ever. Ever, yeah, I love that. Can you see that old wall? That's wild, eh? is quite cold so the lens is messed up a little bit <laughs> yeah I think much colder outside than in here getting ever closer new Bethesda 10 I've heard so much about it but I and I've seen pictures and stuff but I can't even form it an idea no I've got no clue what, it, what, what we're gonna find there what to expect no. exactly what to expect check them running lots of them hey they got such a fright when I stopped they were doing naughty things that's why Some of them are big, eh? Yeah. Oh, some of them are huge. The leader of the troop is there far back. He's enormous. <laughs> you can hardly see them from this distance. They and there are so many of them. Yeah. At least they're still scared of humans, eh? Which is a good thing. Yeah. How interesting is that? What is this? Check this rock here in front of us. That's what I'm talking about. And this incredible valley. Wow. Look at this flat rock here. It's No. That's 
what you call a rocky outcrop? Arts. <laughs> a humongous one. coming into a place like this and you don't know what to expect. Look how everyone is bundled up, eh? Yeah. Oh, you can see it's cold. I can feel it on my hand. The water wheel. Is this the water wheel? So is this an old mill of some kind? Yes. I think I read something about it, a mill. It was built in 1860. 
I think this is it. I'm sure we'll come back here. Definitely. I just want to take a drive through the main road. Yeah, yeah. The main road. This is the main road. This is the down to the CBD. Okay. <laughs> Suspension bridge down there. Yeah, way. we'll have to take a drive down there. Look how pretty this is. Love this. 1876. Wow. It's called Paradise. Well, it looks it's like Paradise. Established 1876. Beautiful. Oh, this too. <gasps> well, we knew. We knew we were going to ooh and ah the whole yep. time. This is fantastic. Oh, I love this. I spotted our guest house along the way. Oh, did you? Yes. So, um, I look forward to returning there later. <laughs> Once we've explored. Caravan Park. Okay, so we were in Pinar Street. Okay, so and there's more to be seen. There's a church tower. <laughs> there's a story about the Pinar Association with a village. Okay. Oh, the Pinar Street. Yes. There's the suspension bridge. Okay. Gorgeous is this place. Wow. I imagine it not looking much different from when it was established, eh? <laughs> exactly, like in 18 somewhere. There's a map for us. Oh, great. Which we'll use later, I think. Go left and then head this way again. Our house. Yes, that is a definite stop. Salah. Public lose. Okay. Oh wow, this place is bigger than what I thought. It is. It is definitely much bigger. <laughs> I, I agree. It was tiny. Compassberg. Compassberg. They have a Camino on Compassberg. Okay. Batista Trading Company established 1893. Oh man. So this is the main road. I love the fact that they write the dates on and one can see clearly what's going on. Look at this Graf Reinet Street. <laughs> post office. Oh, mommy, I think they have like 25 post boxes. The police station is down there. Did you no, see? No, There's see a police it. vehicle. Okay, there, right there, the blue roof. And we are in the Great Karoo, so we will have Karoo architecture. Beautiful. Verandas, we love so much. Oh. <laughs> When I see all stone buildings. Telling you. Dust covers. Is that a bookshop? bookshop? So it's a Saturday afternoon 
and um, it's very quiet. Oh, I love it. I love it. 1898, is that big enough for you? <laughs> I do think this is a good street to go up. Yes. Just look, look at this little one. Oh. Oh, and here are the furrows. They yes, have the, the irrigation furrows. So they've got a natural to. spring somewhere out of the mountains that feeds down here and they laid these furrows out and it's still functional till today. today. Yeah. And then they have the little gated inlets, diversions. Yes, to yeah. go into the property. Yes. That's crazy. What is this called? Quince Quince Cottage, yeah. turned away before we got to the church. Yeah, we're going to head back there now. We have to go find the church. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, no. I'm going to turn around yeah. and come back. <laughs> Look at this one. That crazy. Unfortunately, only the walls remain yes. of this one. That's sad. Look how neatly they were packed. Wow. Let me turn around. I must go and see that else. Do you know what I like? They've extended onto it, but they've kept the integrity. Yes. And the design. How oh, gorgeous is this? What date this was. Even awesome. the wall. Also must have been in the 1800s. Yeah, I'm struggling for signal. I just want to try and find a date. This is stunning. I love this. You got something you want to tell me? I'm on a website here that says newbatista.info. They say uh, many people assume that New Batista started it as a mission station, but it was actually started by a determined group of people who lived in the area and who wanted a church closer than the one in Grafreinet, which was over seven hours ride away in the 1870s. <laughs> Seven hours. And today it like took us just over half an hour. Wow, it's crazy. So it's situated on the farm 8 Cake and here comes the Pinar connection. Yep. It belonged to BJ Pinar. On his gravestone is engraved the parents of the village. Oh. I suppose him and his wife. Oh, and they say true. still today many people in and around New Batista carry the surname or have Pinar connections. Incredible. Interesting, eh? So I'm still getting to a date but clearly it will be in the 1870s. Oh, okay, he was a visionary, eh? BJ Pinard changed the course of the Ghats River to drain the marshes and turn the area into fertile lands where New Batista stands today. Okay. And the farmers of this area, here we go, met for the first time on 15 December 1874 with a view to establishing a village and therefore a congregation. Wow. A town council was elected and in February 1875, a petition group of 169 men 
met the Church Council of Graf Reinet, headed by the Reverend Charles Murray, son of the first preacher, Andrew Murray. That's interesting, eh? Andrew Charles Murray, son of the first preacher, Andrew Murray. And here are their municipal officers. How cute. Very cute. Dr. Bayer's new dear municipal officers. And yes, the church that they wanted. We have, here is their church. 1905. Oh, what an impressive building this is. Beautiful, eh? 1905? Yes, the AD, 1905 on that side. What are the chances? I think the chances are pretty good. I'm hoping that they would know. Yes. Is this just a it's just lift hoping. over? Yeah, just open. So I'm going to take a nice little walk. I think you should. The memory wall. Look at this. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just want to finish my story because I continued reading while you were walking around. I said that in February 1875, that petition group of 169 men met with the church council. And on that same day, negotiations were concluded to buy oat cake from Pinar's sons, the farmer. Yes, yes. And Graf Reinet then only agreed in 1878 that they can get their own church. Oh, okay. So Reverend Charles Murray made a few suggestions regarding a name. My Dutch isn't great, eh? But they, he, at the founders meeting he suggested Laten say Diese Plaatse Nipe Testa noemen but then they say that it was minuted incorrectly as Laten Weihet New Betesta noemen oh, okay. and that is how the town was called New Betesta. <laughs> Probably because of the strong fountain and its biblical reference. Okay. So cool. So it was actually named by mistake. A little bit of a mistake in the minutes, <laughs> yes. Very interesting. I know where you headed. I have to go there. You can only think of one thing now, so let's yeah. tick that off. Okay. <laughs> I must say, all the buildings here are so beautiful. Yeah. It truly takes us back in time. How cool is that? Yeah. You can see he's so at home. Look at that. Yeah. No saddle. 
check. It's the Keep transport. small horse, eh? <laughs> I love it. Yep, brilliant. We're on our way to the suspension bridge and we got distracted by the horse. <laughs> He came galloping past and I couldn't get him so I quickly went there and he came back fortunately. Super cool. Now, let's see how close we can get here. Sir Frederick Suspension Bridge. Look at this old wall. Sure. Hi. I'm going to go for a walk. Yes, I know you've been wanting to since you saw it. Yes. Wow, there's even a little water fall over there. Look at that! Can you imagine when this river is coming down with a lot of water what it looks like? Okay, so these are the two bridges, one here and one over there. So we've got two like, little gorges to cross. I thought there was a bridge further down, another one. So these are the two, one over there and this one here. Cool. Oh, this is so pretty. So did, were you able to find out anything about the bridge? Yeah, I, I haven't found who it was named after, but I can't seem to open the Facebook app. I think it's on there. Okay. But they, they, what I did find was that it's also called the Jubileum Bridge, oh. and it dates back to, you'll never guess, 22 July 1897. Probably not that structure. No, no, of but course. But the first one. That's incredible, eh? Well, that's quite amazing. Oh, that I is. was surprised by that. This is a road we haven't gone down yet. Yes. The entrance to the Owl House. You'll come back just now. Definitely. Outsiders. I think this is the old church hall. I read about the old building that was used from 1878. The old church hall. Look yes. there. And one can contact them for events, weddings, yeah. functions. That's incredible. Amazing. Don't you want to go take a peep through the windows? I want to. Look at those original windows. Yeah. I'm going to do that. say the new church house is 700. Really, eh? Quite a big church. It is a big church. I'll just see if I can see something through the window here. Got a little stage over there. They're like storing some stuff in here. Yeah. 
Yeah, the little irrigation canals all over town. Huh. What do you call these old implements? It's amazing to think that this building here is the original church from 1878. Yeah, when they got permission from Graf Reinet. Yes. Very cool. That it's still here. Yes. Alright, so they say no visit. To New Batista is complete <laughs> yes. without a visit to this place. Yep. They say this is what put New Batista on the map. Really? Well, let me go and see. So they gave me permission to form inside. That's great. At 23, she married Johannes Pinar, a charismatic school teacher who later became a politician. The couple found work in the distant town of Volkswist. Together they explored the world of amateur theatre. Helen's vision of romance and travel, however, ended in betrayal, separation and finally divorce in 1926. intervening years are vague, but in her mid-thirties, Helen Martins, as the youngest and unmarried daughter, reluctantly returned to New Bethesda to care for her ailing parents. The children had been fond of their mother, who died in 1941, but their father was apparently a very moody and difficult man. Early signs of Helen's willful determination appeared when the elderly father was removed to a windowless outside room. After he died in 1945, she painted the room black and named this the Lion's Den. Alone, middle-aged and nearly destitute, Helen had been abandoned by her romantic dreams. Lying ill in bed one night, with the moon shining in through the window, Miss Helen, as she became known, resolved to bring light and colour into her life. She had no overall plan, but what began as a decorative quest soon developed into a fascination with the interplay of reflection and space, of light and dark. Miss Helen hired local workmen to do structural modifications, mostly replacing original windows with the vast panes of glass that would bathe her home in multicolored hues of light. Helen's simple decision to embellish her environment grew into an obsessive urge to express her deepest feelings, her dreams and her desires. From the mundane articles that surrounded her, she created a symbolic language of sun faces, owls, and other images. When Miss Helen turned her attention to the exterior of the house, she went again to the builders and handymen for assistance. Piet van der Merkel, Jonas Adams, and finally Kuzma Gas were invited to try their creative hand with cement and glass. Ku 
Both machas very quickly developed techniques for working with these difficult materials, and before long he was regularly employed. Over a period of about 12 years, she and Kuzmachas created from her imaginings the hundreds of sculptures and relief figures that crowd the camel yard and cover the walls of the house. A procession of shepherds and wise men lead a vast, almost life-size camel train towards a humble nativity scene. An arched entranceway from the street, watched over by a double-faced owl, is significantly barricaded by a wire mesh fence and tall cacti. Like the bottle-skirted hostesses within the yard, this arch must have been intended to welcome visitors into a land of mystery and enchantment. But the fence speaks plainly of an increasingly troubled relationship between Helen Martins and the outside world. Miss Helen was inspired by the poetry of Omar Khayyam, the works of William Blake, and had a deep fascination for religious imagery. Sphinxes, Buddhas, and sanctuaries of tiered glass bottles that Helen called her Meccas. The highlight for any visitor, enacted with great ceremony, was the illumination of Miss Helen's world by her vast collection of lamps and candles. In order to pursue her vision, Miss Helen had managed to endure great physical and emotional hardship. That is, until her eyesight began to fail her. On a cold winter's morning in 1976, at the age of 78, Helen Martins took her own life. Take a walk back to the car. That was interesting. I say it's a cool place. Very interesting, eh? Yeah. And it's sad how her life came to an end, isn't it? Yep. That is sad. Where to next? I see something about fossils here. I want to go and have a look. It says here the kitchen fossil 
exploration center. Yeah, that looks interesting. It Look does, at the dinos. Yeah. Are they dinos? Definitely. I want to make a Yui and I want to check it out. Now the museum or the center is called after Jane's Kitchen who used to find the fossils in the area. Yeah. But his history is incredible. He used to travel all over finding fossils. People couldn't find fossils in the South Pole. He went there and he found it in an hour. <laughs> Look at this. There's load shedding at the moment. Look at this. And it's the real ones and the glass. The real one, yeah. Yes, yeah. It's real. That's crazy. To think these things existed here in the New Bethesda area. Eh? Now they opened this um, exhibition here in honor of James Kitchen. He passed away in 2003. Look at this. Suggest if I'm going down too fast, you just pause this and read it. Sure. Now he proved that the earth was, yes. all the continents were joined together because of the rocks he found in Australia, South Africa, even here in New Bethesda were the same as the ones in Australia and all the other, South America and all that. Wild. Okay. I presume this is his hat. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's a bust of him now. You get to see him now. We are busy with the six extent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think humans are adding a lot to it. <laughs> this is really interesting. Now this is so inspiring actually. To think that James Kitching didn't finish high school, but um, he was when he was six years old, he found his first fossil. How? Six years six old? Six years old. He got his first fossil, and then when he was seven, they found out that that fossil was a new species that he'd found. <laughs> and that made him fall in love with fossils and stuff. And um, as his experience grew, Wits University gave him an honorary degree because of his knowledge. And um, they apparently went down to the South Pole and they couldn't find any fossils at the South Pole. And um, they flew him in there with a helicopter and within an hour, he found the first fossil there. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So he clearly had a knack for that yeah, sort of no, thing. he had the right idea. I see the um, WITS website on their, on their board. Yes. So it's clearly a WITS initiative. Yeah, they, they, he passed away in 2003, so they um, opened this in 2005 in honor of him. You know? That is incredible. And he, he was born here. He was born here in Ubud Testa. No way! Yes. How do you find your first fossil at six? Hello? <laughs> That's wild, eh? Clearly that was his calling. That was what he was born to do. Definitely. That is incredible. So I'm going to go into the shop here and see what I can find. Yes, look at the post office. How cute. Yes, there are old post boxes as well. I told you there were 25 and there are 25. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. It's the truth. Look at the old post box. Yes. Is that what you just said? Yes. Go forward, please. Letters containing bank notes, coins, blank postal orders, or other articles of value must not be posted in this box. Register them at the post office counter. I can't. Video. <laughs> oh, the video. That looks like that and she gets a cute car. He's come to rest. Yep. That monster cold front is arriving here. Do you think? Yeah, definitely. Because it did change quite quickly. Very quickly. I might have to bring the in because it's raining. I think you might have to, yeah. yeah. Hey, look at the tennis courts. Yes. New Batista Sport Club. That's fantastic. And it looks fine. Hmm, like it. Many more houses than I initially thought. I'm blown away. Really, it's much bigger than what I thought. I thought it was going to be a tiny little place. So what I would like you to go and check out now is that they say New Potesta is located at the foot of the Snewberger. So I think these are the ones we see all around. But then the highest mountain in the Eastern Cape is apparently Kampusberg. Okay. I haven't read anything about Compass Mountain, so they call it Kompasberg in the village. And I think that is the one that we see oh, yeah, in there distance. in the back. They said we must drive out here to get the best view of it. Okay. Well, that's quite impressive that it's the highest mountain well, in the it's eastern clearly Cape. visible. Yeah, yeah. I yes. thought it was going to be closed with clouds. Me too. But I'm glad we can get a peek at it. Yeah. So that's the highest peak in the eastern Cape. Yeah. That's, that's what they say online. Super interesting. So that's it, eh? Wow. Compass bag. Yes. Compass mountain. Same thing. Yep. It's an old sign there, eh? Richmond Cape and Hanover. And look there, it's a shell sign as well right. why yield so do we have another richmond in south africa got no idea few minutes later and look at how it's covering the mountain the mist and the clouds and everything unreal if we were 10 minutes later you wouldn't have been able to see i'm it. sure it's going to disappear soon yeah but you can feel the temperature dropping incredibly oh that was cool to see the highest mountain in the Eastern Cape. Very cool. Love it. Oh, and we do have another Richmond, KwaZulu Natal. Okay. As we drive over the cattle grid. <laughs> yeah, it's not drizzling anymore. No. Fortunately, the trees will help a little here. 
Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, it is. Hi, especially when it rains. Yeah, I love it. For the water tank. I love this. That they've converted an old water tower into accommodation. Yeah, That's you gotta love it. Brilliant idea. I mean, that is fantastic. <laughs> that is repurposing. What's its for name? You. I yeah. think it's called the water tower accommodation, <laughs> is what the sign said. But then there's another little one we're looking for yes i think it's over here somewhere i saw a picture of it called the tower cafe there it is there it is oh, it's gorgeous you're going to have to go and check it out to. i think this is so cute tower cafe I don't know if it's open. Look at this. It looks like it's accommodation as well. It is definitely accommodation. Yeah. There it says accommodation, restaurant, galleries. And then they have the museum. But they closed. Yep. Very great. It's fantastic that they converted. Tourist information. Yeah. That's what we are. There's a lot to see, eh? Hey? Whoa. Oh, there's an old cricket field. There's the cemetery. I'm going to the cemetery right now. Can we please go to the mill first? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go I'm to the mill. I'm so eager for the mill. Mill cemetery. Let's go. Um, cricket field. In that order. Let's do that. Yes. Then. So yeah, we're approaching the mill. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. I don't know, I think I'm going to stop in the front there. Might be better. Yes. Do you want to take a walk? Yeah. thought you might want to go see the, the wheel up close. Yes. Eighteen sixty. Crazy. I read online. Look at this. Can you believe it? No wonder the mill is over here. So then they would have diverted the water into here and this would have turned the mill. How interesting is this? There's one right there.
So this is where the water came down over there and then it started spinning this wheel. I suppose it's got a brake on at the moment. So the water would come down here, it would go through this, back into that canal over there. It would have been interesting to see inside there. So interesting with the water canal and everything, eh? They obviously have a lot of water here. Yeah, they do. And it's like flowing big time. I can hear it. That was super cool. Yeah. I've been wanting to see them all up close since we came. <laughs> do you think that's the cemetery? I know it's the cemetery. Twenty-five. See, it's still in Dutch. Really? And the opstanding in Heilieven. I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. This gate is locked. So I'm going to go in with the pedestrian gate. Okay. Is it cleaning up unmarked graves? You see those small graves must be for children. Henrik Skok van der Merwe was born on the 22nd of the 1st, 1872 and passed away on the 3rd of the 5th, 1948. And his wife Hester van der Merwe, she was born Erlang, born on the 19th of February, 1875 and passed away on the 11th of the 5th, 1939. Willem Johannes Pinar. 5th of June 1852 and passed away on the 20th of December 1938. And his wife Elizabeth Katharina Pinar, born on the 10th of August 1845, passed away on the 7th of August 1917. See the Pinars, very prominent in this town. Dr. Samuel Patherford Pinar. Born on the 4th of April 1906 and passed away on the 21st of June 1940. Another very neat cemetery. It looks like it, eh? Hey? Oh, very well kept. You can see they clean it regularly. They've got little heaps already where they've cleaned up. And there's old graves here. From the Dating back to? Into the 1800s. Okay. I can't remember the exact dates now, but there were quite a few. Old <laughs> ones. Old ones, yeah. So this side of the cemetery, on the back side, they say there's an old cricket ground. Let's see if we can spot the old, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that we would never get no through. No way. Like as in never. This must have been the old cricket ground. You think? Yeah. They did indicate it on that tourist map. Yes. Right behind the cemetery and this is it. This is right behind the cemetery, so this is the old cricket ground. Yeah, this is like all derelict. This yes. is vacant too. Do you think the road is passable? Oh yeah. Listen, while I have that website open, they say apparently the the oldest grave here date back to 1786. What? But time has faded the carvings on many of them 
um, and lichen have eaten into them so it makes them hard to read. Oh, I see. That's quite a long time. So this must have been their buildings. This is the old cricket pitch, look at this. Oh, definitely. I'm glad we found this. Oh, look how flat it is. What a beautiful building this is. Yeah, so this is the cricket pitch, oh no. Oh man. They're oval. Yes. Look, poles go around there. Definitely. Yes. You can't sure. mistake it. I mean, yeah. nothing else grows here except a few shrubs here and there. So oh, it was definitely a clearing. Definitely the cricket pitch. Hey. It's still cool to think that they played cricket here back yeah. in the day. And it looks like seriously because look at the building that they have here. Those are change rooms. Yeah. And that was the recreational facility for afterwards. Quite cool. The Greg Price Gallery. There seems to be quite a few galleries in town, but they closed. I yeah. think it might be the weather. Or the fact that it's a weekend. I think so, yeah. Well, if you look on our windshield, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, there's sleet falling. Look at that. It's not drops, it's sleet. <laughs> ah, we're going to get a surprise tonight, I think. <laughs> I'm hoping for a white surprise, but oh, we'll see. Oh no, let's see. Wake up with a white cover everywhere. This is where we ordered our... Um, Takeaways. So if you look at the menu, I've ordered the bolognese pasta and Sonia's ordered the aloha pizza. Trying to form in the rain. <laughs> but this is it, we've got our food now. We're heading to our accommodation. Salah. We are blessed with Salah's food. She says they've been hearing about the snow and um, she says that it, they think it might come tomorrow. All right, just as we leave. Just as we leave, yeah. <laughs> so let's see, they cancelled all there. They had some um, run or walk thing in the, in the village today. Oh, and really? cancelled it because of the weather. Okay. And it was supposed to be raining all day and it never did. But they, so that's probably why some of the places are closed too. Exactly. And they, um, they have a market as well. That was cancelled. Okay. Um, we but, arrived too late for that, I'm sure. But she says that if it rains a lot, it doesn't snow. And it hasn't rained a lot. So There's the a chance. Sleet, the sleet might be an indication. So let's see what happens when we wake up in the morning. Yeah, I still hope we see some snow. Yes. So we've been passing our accommodation since we arrived back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> but now it's checking time. Yes. Half past five, which is early for us. <gasps> it is called Meerkat. Nice. And here we are. Meerkat. Okay, so I'll have to hop out and open the gate. Yes. So this is where we're staying for the night. In New Batista. By Meerkat. Look how nice and so nice and warm in here. 
This is cozy. This is cozy. Bathroom. Spring loaded door. Hey, this is supper for this evening. My bolognese, like I showed you, and Sonny's pizza. What pizza is it? Aloha. Ba Aloha. Bacon and pineapple. Oh, that's going to be so nice. So we're in our accommodation here at Mirkat in New Bethesda. We're actually pretty excited because we think there's a good chance that there's going to be snow outside tomorrow. If not outside on the mountain that we showed you earlier today, there might be snow out on that mountain. She says, the lady, our host says that if there's a blanket covering the mountain and that blanket goes away, then it's normally got snow on. So that mountain we showed you earlier might have snow on tomorrow morning because it's completely covered. Or we might wake up and it'll be white outside. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you guys in the morning. A steamy cup of hot chocolate and coffee. Good morning from a crisp new Bethesda. Our coffee's done. Shower's done. Car's packed. Now we're ready to leave new Bethesda. As you can see, it didn't snow last night. <laughs> But it feels as cold as if it did snow. <laughs> Freezing. Yeah, can you believe it? We're leaving and it's not even light yet. So everyone has their own theory about what signals snow coming and what not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Clearly the signals weren't there yesterday. No, nothing arrived. How cool is this, eh? Yeah, check all the succulents. I read somewhere that there's a big variety of, of succulents in the area. Look at all the cacti. Yeah. Super cool. I'm, I try to grow one of those ones remember yes and then I drowned it because it came from the desert <laughs> you gave it too much water <laughs> do you want to know what Google says about the temperature yes do you want to venture a guess uh, I would say about minus two no they say it's two okay. it feels like minus three okay <laughs> it definitely does eh? <laughs> an art gallery sculpture studio very interesting village this is oh, I enjoyed it I enjoyed our stay here in New Bethesda bone lady studio okay so she must make um, sculptures and things with um, Animal bones and... Well, hopefully not human bones. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man! Someone's building a new bridge over there. Now, I don't know if this is one of the access roads. I think this is an access road to the village. But this bridge must have washed away some time ago. And they're rebuilding it with bricks and stone and... It looks amazing with those, all those columns underneath it. Yeah, it's freezing. That bridge looks so cool. 
Yeah, I, I saw that when we drove past yesterday when we came in. It looks gorgeous. The whole thing is when we came in, I thought it was a private road and it was a private bridge, but now when I looked at it properly, it looks like this is, is an access to the village from this angle. It looks like they're building a whole new road too. Yes. Paved. Yeah, definitely. I think this is access to the village. Hmm. It'll be nice when it's done, eh? Yeah. My angel, this was really a great visit to Newbert Test. I'm so happy we came here. Same here. The Waapatsberg Pass has got snow on it. We're just a few kilometers outside of uh, New Bethesda. And look at this. Even that board is covered in snow. It is freezing. Solid, 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 eh? Jeez. Incredible. Nice. <laughs> Half of it is iced over. Yes.